Hey everyone! You may remember Cyberpunk Isometric RPG Game Deck from a previous Community Spotlight segment, but this time, Anshar Studios has joined us to shed light on how they incorporated sophisticated branching pathways to focus on player choice over combat. Get all the details in their tech blog on the Unreal Engine feed. Take control of your scene with two new tips and tricks videos on the official Unreal Engine YouTube channel. The new videos focus on masking, a technique used to alter specific parts of your final output without affecting the rest of the scene. Watch these new additions to learn how to use the custom depth buffer and custom stencil buffer to apply unique rendering styles to objects in your scene. Students around the world love playing games like Fortnite. What if they could enjoy learning history, math, science, or social studies while they play and create? Our brand new course, Teaching with Fortnite Creative, will not only get you up and running with Fortnite Creative, it'll help you bring interactive 3D and more fun into your classroom. In their Revving the Engine series, Unwinnable has been unearthing personal stories of the challenges and inspirations of developers working on intriguing projects using Unreal Engine. Their latest features tell tales of extinction, exploration, and reality-bending doorways. Head over to the feed to meet the teams behind Omno, Endling, and Revoider. And now to highlight our top weekly karma earners, many thanks to Clockwork Ocean, Every Nun, Mama Marsis, Shadow River, Churr, T. Sumisaki, Fun and Friendly, The Chaos Spectrum, Evil Cleric, and Another Zack. This week's Community Spotlights are dedicated to our long-awaited Unreal Film Jam winners, who created short films based on the theme, Oh, the Places You'll Go. Taking first place and the Audience Choice Award is Walled Up by Alexander Goodwin and Rita Mirgo. Set somewhere in near-future St. Petersburg, follow the story of a little girl trying to experience the world beyond the walls of her city. Great work by the team with this beautiful and poetic piece. Keep your tissues nearby. With an entirely different feel, coming in second place, Bombs Away comically features the journey of two bombs falling in love. Created by Jack Bromhead, the silly and fun short does an exquisite job of bringing life and expression to what is normally a very mundane object. And in third place, the thought-provoking piece Neon Skies shares a moment of reflection from the last human on Earth, speaking to their hopes, dreams, and purpose. What is humanity's ultimate path? The presentation of the monologue expertly evokes the delicate moment the human is experiencing. Watch the full-length versions of their shorts on YouTube. Congratulations to the winners and all of those who participated. Thanks for watching this week's news and community spotlight. Hi everyone and welcome to this week's Inside Unreal. I'm your host Victor Broden and my guest today as well as last week is Andrea Suka, technical evangelist from the European Evangelism team. Hi, Victor. Hi. Welcome back. Today we yeah. are continuing our sailing adventure. Yeah. Today we do cannons, animations, um, some effects, and hopefully sound. Did you prepare the stuff I asked you for? I did, but you found much better <laughs> samples that we're going to use <laughs> other than my splash, splash, boom, boom. <laughs> um, I tend to do onomatopoeia for my sort of game jam and prototypes because I find it funny, and it's also very clear to the person doing the sound that like, oh, okay, that's supposed to be a cannonball sound when it says boom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but funny enough, I I tried to implement some sounds uh, this morning and, and tried to test a bit how we would do it and how we can maybe show different ways how to implement sound in such a game. Um, uh, and I needed something, something. So um, yeah, I was looking in the marketplace again. So yeah, again, we are using something we didn't ma uh, self-made. Um, so only for managing expectations, I want to say something. So um, the whole thing we are doing here is not really meant to be like, I follow you step by step. It's more like, the idea for this was more like, how would you approach a complete game? How would you do really, really fast a prototype where you get a feeling for the game itself? So I'm leveraging on all tools I can get my hands on. 
uh, inside the engine, but also outside to get whatever it needs to make this kind of a cool prototype and not just like a gray box um, where we code our like a prototype. Because when we do this, we also learn what assets we will need. And we will see this with animations, for example. Um, uh, what assets do we need when we do would do this in full production? And it's a little bit like, for, for me, this is kind of a digital Bob Ross kind of thing. It's <laughs> like, okay, let's, let's try some stuff. Let's get it together and then see how it feels like. And sometimes uh, by doing so, you are finding maybe ways you haven't thought about first, but that feel cool. And then, then it's leading you in a certain direction because every game you start wants to be expressed. <laughs> you just have to figure out. Someone said that if you make a design for something, it's not like you know exactly what it is. It's more like you have this block and then you're, putting, you, you're crashing all pieces away until your nice statue is visible. Um, yeah, so uh, let's let's start. We have we have a lot. Uh, again, it's maybe too much for, for for a whole thing. But what I want to achieve today is making cannons, shooting them, having feedback for shooting when they hit something, etc. And then maybe a short outlook, um, a short outlook, what you would do next um, uh, with it, like AI uh, and stuff. <laughs> Should there be a mustache on sales? <laughs> so where are we gonna? So you you can answer that. We're we're not uh, good enough artists to be able to um, put that together without it being a little bit too silly. I don't know. We're going pretty silly here, but please, the floor is yours, Andreas. Okay, we we, we try that. So um, first of all, let's fix uh, some things, uh, some cleanup um, I didn't do last time. So for example, what you can maybe see here is the shadows are disappearing if I'm too far away. L let's fix uh, that first. And that's basically uh, the distance field shadows. Um, and you can find, um, uh, you find them in the directional light. So I can go to the directional light. And if I take a look for, I can search for it, distance field. Uh, shadow distance, there you see 3,000, which is for our camera, not enough. So let's go for something like 4,000, and then you will directly see they should... Uh, oh, that was wrong. Um, uh, here, d dynamic distance field shadows, 4,000, and then you can see we have shadows at something. It's really important that we can see where our boat is. Uh, so that's nice. The other thing I personally dislike is a little bit the, uh, the fog. There's a little bit too much fog in the scene. Um, so let's get rid of that. And that's, uh, I think, I'm not 100% sure, but it should be in the, let's search for it. It should be in the atmospheric uh, height fog. And maybe the multiplayer, the fog multiplier is pretty high. So let's turn that down to something like that. And we have a little bit brighter brighter light. So that that is uh, two, two things I, I wanted to, to change here. And then in addition, um, oh, I have this nice glass. I have to show this. So I have this uh, this really nice uh, glass with a uh, with a pirate on it. So are you also prepared for the stream? So I can already cosplay the game. What about you? <laughs> I, I am. I am. As soon as we set sails. Oh, okay. Um, so before we set sails, uh, let's also fix one other thing right now. Uh, the game mode, as as we discussed last time, the game mode defines what is a pawn um, we are using, etc. So right now the game mode is not overwritten, so it's a standard. Um, uh, it's a standard game mode that comes uh, with it. When I just start, you can see here is game mode base. So let's have an own one um, uh, first. So let's make one, uh, and that's pretty easy. Uh, we just pick game mode class and we call it BP, uh, or let's call it uh, GM for game mode, and then pirates. So that's our game mode. Um, and then we can find it here and override it. And then our game mode, if I, if I open this up on the right screen, uh, then you can see um, what are the defaults. And um, default pawn class here, for example, we can set our BP war gallant. So now we have, to, we have set it up properly. So um, for example, we have this uh, start, uh, player start. So what the game system automatically is doing if I'm not like placing one for the player, this one, uh, this should be placed here. If I disable the auto process for the player, 
and now take a look here is the start and when I press start so now it is spawning a ship for us at the start position um, and it's spawning the pawn uh, I said but you can also see what's happening now <laughs> it, it is unfortunate <laughs> David Jones ship. <laughs> it goes under. The reason is we haven't set it up properly, um, and it's also complaining here. So instead of doing that, I so it's basically the water points we haven't defined. Um, so I will keep it like this for now that we set it and set player world. Uh, in a perfect world with more time, uh, I would maybe move this definition of the high uh, of the water points inside the pawn and would define it there, and then we can spawn it and everything is fine. But um, again, as said, my main my main purpose of this is not making the perfect pipeline and everything like super streamlined. It's more about okay, let's maybe be a little bit um, hands on and maybe a little bit dirty here and there to get something done um, fast. Okay, so uh, let's check if our boat is still still there and moving. So what we did last time is we could uh, open up the sails and we can close the sails, and uh, when we go with the wind the boat is faster and when we go against the wind uh, we get slower so right now if i eject here and can fly around uh, you can see the wind is coming from north um, so that's a little bit hard hard to see so um yeah that that's the second thing i wanted to uh, to show and the next is uh, the wind so right now the wind is actually just defined by this uh, this number here the wind direction uh, in this ocean manager and we are just using it and it's a fixed number so it's actually there's no wind there's just a definition of 0 0.25 uh, is is, is uh, the wind direction and that's static and, and uh, keeps like that so but what I want to have is a little bit more dynamic so the wind should change so let's do that really fast um, so that is uh, that comes from this asset pack there is this um, uh, there is this ocean manager and what this is doing every tick is setting the parameter and what we already did uh, last time to have a vector here you remember Victor we added a vector I remember okay um, so uh, we saved this as a parameter collection so we have uh, x y and that as a real vector um, so what I want to do now is instead of having a static wind direction we want to change it so to do this uh, what I do is uh, I make a new function, or in this case, this case a custom custom event here. I call this um, new or update wind direction. So we are, and this is something we are calling directly when the uh, game begins, update wind direction. So here it's called. Uh, and what we do here is uh, we want to here I have the va uh, variable already. I want to set a new wind direction, and to do that, I take the old one, and then let's add a random to it. So I add to the old one a random float uh, in range. So I can say it is between minus 0 0.1 and between 0 0.1. I want to change, or let, let's make it more dramatic for now, so we can can really see it. Uh, so we, we add that, and then we set this as a new wind direction. And when, when we have done that, so currently nothing will happen. We just set this value. Um, so, But if we have done that, next thing we do is we set a timer to call this function again. Uh, so the, we, we set that, and then, then we say uh, um, set timer by function name. Um, and then we just take this name. And then we say... Um, random integer this time in range between let's do something small so we can see it between five seconds and eight seconds for example i convert it to a float the only reason i'm doing this instead of a float that i really know i have five six seven or eight um, and not like 5.5 .5 or 5.4 which i can't see so what it basically is doing is, is setting it's setting that so um Let's first check if this is working if I do print string and then check the new wind direction. And uh, then we can see, so minus 0 0.12. So after five to eight seconds, uh, there's minus 1.9, etc. So that looks good. Um, so now we have to do something with it. Um, 
So we have to, to set that. So before we set the parameters here, um, which we use in um, basically in the shader and somewhere and, and, and many, many other places, um, we have to uh, set the wind direction to the new wind direction. So what we basically want to do is we set the wind direction in tick. And now, I mean, we are doing games. So I could do it like super hardcore, like just set it. If I, if I do this, uh, I can, let's do it first. Then you can see why this is not what we want. So what you can see now is that after a few seconds, you see it just flipped. It's, it's a little bit subtle because we can see it mainly on the wind vane on the ship. Uh, but, but after there you saw it, it just flipped and you see it on the water. Um, yeah. So we are a game. Wind doesn't really behave like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it, it we we need to we need to lerp, right, Victor? Yes, yes. There are many different so, ways to do it. So exactly. So we 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 do an f interpret constant. So what it basically does, it takes the current uh, a current value, which is our current wind direction, and we say we want to go to the new wind direction, which is uh, what we just said. And then we need uh, the delta time, which is uh, this one. And then we need an interpretation speed. So let's do something. If it is, it is a co constant, mean, just means that whatever um, whatever distance we have to go from wind direction to new wind direction, it's always the same speed. Um, Victor cannot replay as he seemed to be distracted by the chat. Oh, by the way, um, as last time, uh, same as last time. So feel free to ask any questions, and we um, Vic Victor will pass them to me, and then then I will directly answer instead of waiting to the end. If you have something you want to know, uh, we we can definitely do this. Um, okay, so let let's see what's happening now. Uh, so after a few seconds, uh, let's see. Does the wind change? It's a bit hard to see. So let's, uh, but on the wind vane, you can see it and on the water as well. We can make it a little bit. At, you can already see if you make this prototype, maybe our wind hasn't enough, um, isn't expressed enough. So it's it's too subtle. So, but I want to play with it. So I need much more. I mean, I need to pay much more attention on the wind. Like maybe we need a wind effect, which I can add later, or we need a UI showing it or whatever better is in the world. Um, so let's see, print string. So let's put the wind direction there. And then let's see, oops, let's see what it does. So basically you can see now on, on the values, it is changing after five to eight seconds, it is changing but you don't really see a big effect on that. And I can tell you why. So um, because we're setting the wind direction here, but if you take a look in the wind parameters, um, currently what we only do is we use a wind vector, uh, but we didn't, save, uh, we didn't save the new wind direction. So what we basically have to do is set scalar parameter value to this, uh, if you remember, we have uh, we have this parameter collection for the ocean, which is used by the shader and 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 in other areas. Um, so we have to find there the wind direction, and then we add it there as well. And the only thing we are doing here is just for convenience, uh, saving it also in uh, as as a uh, as a direction as a vector because it's easier if we do it once here instead of doing it on, on thousand different um, areas. So let's see what's happening now. So if I can make this full screen, so every five to eight seconds, the wind is changing <laughs> quite drastically, but we can now uh, really see this. So um, now it is, um, it is exactly doing what we want, but uh, it's just a little bit to, we have to tweak it. Um, a bit, uh, but that's pretty easy. So first of all, the speed is too high. So let's do something like 0, 005, something like that. So it's subtile enough. And then we change not so dramatically the direction. Here you could go crazy now. Now you could implement a weather system depending where you are and maybe on the on the shore, it is coming from the shore. So you could get really, really crazy. Uh, that's one of my biggest problems when I work on those things that I, I tend to get crazy. And you have always to 
think about what do I do now? What is the most important thing I want to do? So for me now, I, I really want like to express the wind better. Um, uh, and I, I, I'm doing a sailing game and I want to have the cannons and I want to have influence. The wind should influence it. So you can see now the wind is moving, but subtile enough uh, that it doesn't feel, uh, uh, it doesn't even feel uh, like it. But, but now we have a little bit of an additional challenge um, that the wind is every 10 to 15 seconds, it is changing slightly the direction. So yeah, uh, we could add more logic here, but we, we leave it for now uh, like that. So another thing I want to do is also to express the wind in a better way. Uh, as I said at the beginning, I'm, I'm sailing. So I, I love this moment when the boat is catched by the wind and then it's, it's slightly turning to the side. Mm -hmm. So we need that. So we have shortly to think about what does this leaning mean? So basically a boat has a keel, which is in the water, really deep and really heavy. Um, and then you have the sails and then the wind is putting pressure on the sails. So what's happening is that the boat is, is beginning to rotate. So, but it, what it, what is, is doing at the end is the a center of mass is moving to the left or to the right. So let's, uh, let's simulate, uh, uh, that actually. So we can, um, we can go here and our ship is, uh, 100 kilogram. And if you check here in the settings, you will find center, uh, center of mass offset. So we can we can actually offset and play with that. So let's grab the ship and then set center of mass. So we can we can actually set that and then split the struct. So first of all, let's put the Z um, uh, down. So minus 150 might be good in our scale. So now the center of mass is a little bit below what it is calculated from the engine. And now we have to lean it on the Y axis, left and right, depending on the wind direction. So what we basically can do is, uh, I will shortly grab this here. So we have the ocean manager, we have our wind vector, we just saved again. Um, and then instead of making a dot product for the forward vector, to define if we are in front of it of, of the uh, wind or have it backwards, we do get actor right vector. So we are just comparing right with the wind direction. And if this is positive, yeah, I think if it's positive, then we should lean to the left. And when it's negative, we should lean to the right. So what we can do is we can multiply that by I think, I don't know, maybe also something like 150, which was move the center, the, uh, the center to the left or to the right, which should turn our ship around. I'm not 100% sure if this will work, but let's try. So let's see what it does. It already does a bit. So the wind currently is coming from, so first of all, what I want to change is the wind is coming always from top, which is hard to see. So let's make a better initial uh, value. Um, so again, we go to the ocean manager we just uh, used for updating the wind direction. It is called directly at the start, but the wind direction at start is, is zero, zero. So let's do again something like 0 0.25, which should be away from, yeah, from the coast. So, so, the wind, <laughs> so <laughs> it is leaning, but to the wrong side. So this is, is coming from back. So the, the wind is coming from land, but it's leaning in the wrong direction. So we have to just turn this around. It should be easy by just doing minus 150. So now let's see if this is really working. Oh, and let's get, get rid of the print string here. So now we are leaning to the side. Um, now we have the wind from the back, so we don't lean. So wind comes from the right, we're leaning to the left and vice versa, which already feels pretty cool because yeah. this, this is, this is how a, a, a ship should feel like, right? Okay. So that's one thing. The other thing you can see is even if I don't have my sails up, it is leaning, um, uh, because currently I don't. I don't really care for uh, if, if the sail is up or not, but that is super easy to fix. We can just 
multiply the sale power from the last time we had the sale power is zero. Uh, if we have no sales, it's half. Uh, if we have a reef and if we have full sales, it's one. So with this little trick, uh, we can go with this. And then if I put down the sales, we should lean over. And if I take the sales up, it is going back to normal and just influenced by the waves, which is nice. So yeah, now, now we have that. And, and let's do one last thing to improve even further that we can see the, uh, the sail. Um, currently, our sails are pretty static. So even if, the, if we have the material, uh, if we made this material so it's, it's like blowing inside, they are not moving with the boat. So we could now discuss if it would be cool gameplay if I could move them by myself and depending on how good I put them, the faster I go. That's maybe a little bit too too much for me right now, um, or at least too much for, um, for for this kind of prototype. Um, I want to have it arcade, so it's like arcade, arcade-like, uh, so not too hard. Um, so. But then let's do it automatically. So I have already this uh, this function that's called every tick about update uh, the sales. So let's grab the sales. So here you begin to see, oh, we're doing all the sale logic inside the boat. Now it's already something you put on your to-do list, refactor the sales and moves this to a separate part because this has become ugly. Also that I have it like, I just put them here and place them here. This is not nice. I could make an array now of the of the et cetera, et cetera. So um, when you prototype, I think it's always important to have a good balance between I want to have it clean and working on it, but also I want to progress fast enough. So you always have to find the right balance. But there would be a point now where I would say, okay, um, maybe tomorrow, maybe in two days, I should maybe clean this up and do it a little bit different. I will show at the canons how we would do it um, oh, and we made this a separate uh, entity in logic. So, but for now, we, we just take a sale and we just say set relative relative uh, rotation. Uh, and we do this with all the sales. And again, you could get crazy here. Now we can say we have different sales and we have different orientations of the sales and they should behave different. You can make, make it really vivid and cool. Uh, but for now, uh, we, we just do that. This and then um, we actually uh, let me see. We actually do the same as here. I think yes. Maybe we do it forward. I have to let me think. So what I basically want to do is depending on um, uh, depending on the rotation of the wind, uh, I want to rotate uh, the sails. But I think this should be right. Let's let's try. So again, I do right vector against wind vector. So I have here something between uh, one and minus one. And now I do map range clamp. The reason I'm doing this is I can can easier read it. You could also multi just multiply it with forty or minus forty. So, but basically, what it is doing is if or what it should do. <laughs> if the wind uh, is coming from the side, it should try to rotate the sail uh, against the wind uh, so to get as much wind as possible, but the maximum is minus or plus uh, 40 degree. Um, so basically what I'm... And here you can again see why it was so important last time to have uh, the world, the, the pivot, um, the world origin of this uh, here, because all the mathematics is much easier. So what I basically want to do is rotate this depending on um, on the wind. So let's see if this is that looks already pretty okay, except it is again the wrong direction. So the boat is leaning to the right side, but the sails are on the wrong one. Now that's okay. So basically, I can just turn this around. I do this, and then we should have sails that behave like sails. So now we have uh, we have a boat that's leaning to the side, and the sails are rotating uh, to the right side. So this is all not just for fun; it's also for having feedback for the player uh, what he's doing if it's if it's working or not. So it gives um, 
Uh, this is this is cool. Okay. So basically, now I finish up the sales and let's do cannons. Okay. So now, now comes cannons. Um, you can see I have already, uh, when I made the model, I I left holes for the uh, for the cannons. Um, Let's switch to Blender. So basically what I did in Blender, um, I modeled a, a, a very easy, super straightforward um, a hatch and a cannon, and I added uh, three bones. So it's basically a root bone, which is here really tiny inside, and then I have a cannon bone, and then I have a bone for the hatch. So if I select that and go to post mode, you can see if I like rotate that, I can manipulate the hatch. So this is... There's not much magic. You find a lot of tutorials how to how how to do that, and then I uh, I export that. And for the export, it's just important that the orientation is right. So the the bone axis should be X. Um, that that's important. That makes your life easier. Um, and that's that's basically that's basically it. So um, yeah, let's let's uh, let's do uh, add the cannons. Are you still there? Uh, are you talking to me? Yeah. I'm still here. I was responding to chat. How is chat? I think chat's doing all right. Paying attention. That's cool. I'm still so impressed from last time when we asked where they're from. Well, I was well, wondering. Well, that's another good question. <laughs> <laughs> we can't ask that again. Mm. All chat on deck. How are you, Chad? Where's the Chad? So uh, again, if you have any questions or I'm too fast, then don't hesitate to ask. Mm, okay, so what what did I want to do? I want to do Canon. So first of all, we add a new folder because I know we will do a lot with Canons. So we will add the Canons and one extra folder. And then we import um the canon which is as said it's just a skeleton uh, a skeleton mesh with a skeleton you can see when i import it i don't want to create a physical asset i want to import the normals i want to replace the vertex uh, color but i don't have vertex color on that um anything else i don't check um oh i don't create do not create new material no don't create new material instance because i have the material before I also don't import the textures. So, um, and you should import it to the folder. Okay, so he here we are. So I have just two assets. One is the skeleton mesh itself. So it is, here's a mesh. And the reason why I didn't want to bring in new material is because it's the same material as a boat is using. Um, so really straightforward material with just this lookup table actually. Um, for the coloring. Um, so I have that. Uh, and then I have the skeleton, which is as, as I said before, it's just like the root. Here's a cannon. Um, so uh, see here, that looks good. And here's a hatch. I can open and close it, hopefully. Um, so he, he, here we are. Um, uh, having our, our absolutely core basics. And now we have before we go deeper, we have to think a little bit how we want to do it and what we want to do. So when we have a cannon on this boat, obviously we want to fire them. So we will have a button and that fires it. So we have we need an animation for that. We need a sound for it and we need um, FX for it. So some, some smoke or whatever. Um, that's the first state. Then we have, we want them to close. So the, I made the hatch, and the hatch is in the inside. It's yellow, and I made it so the player can really visible see that the hatches are open. And the other side, when it's closed, it's like of it's like brownish. So, um, so the state is very very visible. So we shoot. We want to close when it's reloaded. We want to reopen, so the player can see. Oh, they are they are open. So first, maybe I show you how it would look like if we would just throw it in like that so let's select this go here 
add skeletal mesh. And then here we have one, here we have one. So let's rotate that 90 degree. And let's move it out somewhere where we can see it. Uh, like, like, well, maybe the snapping with 10 is a bit too much, so 5 is good. Okay, so he here you can see, here I have it. So if I compile and save and go back to the scene, I can I can see it here. Nice. So that's already pretty cool, right? Um, so going back to the logic, um, what we want is we want to shoot, then they should close, then there should be a timer that tells the hatch, no, you're reloaded, then it should open again. And then it should be in a ready state so I can shoot again. And then it starts again. And that's a state machine. Um, and we have a skeleton mesh already. So the question is, where do we put which part of logic? And again, there are a thousand ways to do it. So there's not always one way to do stuff. Um, I show you the way uh, I, I would approach that. So we can use the animation blueprint, uh, which gives us already a state machine. So let's do that. Uh, I do a right click here on the mesh, and then I can go to create, and then I can say animation blueprint. So I call this anmbp canon. Uh, so uh, when I open an anmbp, uh, uh, it is bind to the skeleton. So it always belongs to the skeleton. Um, and then I have two areas that are important. I have the event graph, which is kind of, I gather all the data I need um, from the logic, from wherever. And then I push it into the anim graph and here I make the, the pose. Um, so right now here's nothing in it. Um, so what we want to do is actually, we want to add a state machine, it's called. Uh, we just call this default. And when I open this up, it's completely empty. Here it starts. So I will map it out very fast, and then I can explain a little bit what it does. So first of all, as I said, we want to have a new state, which is the ready state. So Canon is like ready and waiting to be shot. Next one, we do a new state, and we say uh, shooting. So here it is shooting. If it's ready with shooting, it, we need a new state. And this state uh, we call closing hatch and then when the hatch is closed and some time passed uh, we add a new state and say opening hatch so we have that and then when it's opened then it is ready and i can shoot again so that's basically a state machine and you see this in the mannequin uh, example third person example uh, that's very visible so you have you have your walking, and then you have your start jump, you have your jump loop, and then you have your end jump if you are not in the air anymore. So we have these conditions uh, in between. So first of all, the question is, how do we go from ready to shooting? And then when shooting, hmm, how do we go to closed hatch? Actually, when shooting is done. So this is actually easy. We can say automatic rule based on the sequence. So we can say, if this is played to the end, then closing hatch should be played. Closing hatch to opening hatch. Hmm, this is interesting. Actually, someone else has to tell the cannon, hey, cannon, you are ready. We can we can shoot again. And then when opening hatch is done, uh, it is ready. So this is, again, easy. We just say if this is played to the end. So now we have a state machine, but nothing in it. And it's also complaining that there's nothing in it. So I can double click here, and then I can do stuff. Like here, for example, I could play an animation. I don't have any animation. So we need to get some animations in. Um, before we do the animations, um, we need to think about how to combine, um, how do we control this animation blueprint? So basically, what we want to do is we want to tell this animation blueprint, shoot now. So to do that, we will do as similar to the states of the sale, we do the states as enum. Um, so we can easily address them. So I do enum, e, canon, state, and open that up, and then we add some states, and one, the first one is ready. I'm even not sure if we will really use ready, but you will see in a second. Then we do a shoot, and then we do a reload. So 
what we have now is when we are ready and want shooting, then we actually want to tell it by changing this value. So we need this value. So I do a variable, I call it canon state. And then I change the type. And then with E canon state, I can find my enum. And now I can drag it in, get enum. And I can say, if you are set to shoot, then I transition from ready to shooting. Okay, so that's first. Um, and here it is the same. So I can go here and say again, so canon state, but this time I tell you from outside, like if you are reloaded, I should call this reloaded. Give me a second. Let's just rename that. So if it's reloaded, um, then we go to opening hatch. You could follow so far? Yeah. I don't know about chat. Is chat following? I don't know. This is well, all. That's why um, I asked them. We will ask questions later, and who cannot answer will we'll lose his shit. What do we have? Do we have badges here on stream or something? No, right? No, you, get, you have to get uh, bonus, bonus stuff. You get cool emotes, right? don't think we have the, any cool emotes, unfortunately, on the channel. Something I'd like to work on. Uh, okay, so we, we have that, but it has no content. And now we need the animations um, to, 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 to make that happen. So there's something that's one of the features in the engine, which is pretty, it's not really new, but it got to a state that it is really, really cool. And that's called control rig. So instead of going in Blender and doing my rig here and doing my animation here and bake it out, I can do all in engine now. Uh, so let's do that. Um, so first of all, I take my, uh, my mesh, do a right click and we, you have to enable this. Um, uh, it is experimental. You have to enable this as a plugin. Uh, we, we did really at the start. Um, and then I create this asset, which is called Control Rig. So this is a new editor. Uh, and I have uh, three big areas. So one is here, my preview. Here is my hierarchy. And here is a graph uh, where I can set up my rig. Uh, so what Unreal Engine is this? This is the com complete Lorma uh, 25.3, which is uh, the most current version you get in the launcher. Um, so I, I have I have this asset now. Uh, so let's make some manipulator, some controller, so we can make an animation with that. Um, as said, I can I can select the stuff here. I can see the initial transforms and all that. Um, so what we want to do is I do a right click here and I add a new control, and I call the first control uh, hatch. Oops, uh, hatch control. Um, so I can drag this in and can do stuff with it. But first I have to set it up properly. So right now it is it is there, but I want to control the hatch. So what I'm basically doing, um, and uh, again, um, and you can see this in the control, there, there were a control rig live stream some time ago, right, Victor? Yeah, I just pasted it in chat. Okay, cool. So it is still experimental. There's stuff that is changing and there's a lot of quality of life stuff that will come. Um, so right now, if I want to set this up, I have to move it near the bone. Uh, I want to manipulate and I do right click and then I set initial transform from closest bone. So now it's jumping there and it's taking, um, taking the values from this, from this bone. Uh, you can extend all that also with, uh, with Python and do your own super fancy stuff. Um, as I said before, I will touch a lot of things, but we go, don't go too deep. Mm. So for, for this uh, hatch control, let's change another gizmo. So we want to have a circle, maybe a thick one. And you can see it's rotated wrong. So we have to change the transform a bit. Um, rotated, I think, 90 degree around x, because x is pointing upwards. And then it's a little bit big. So let's do something 0 0.3 or something. Yeah, that's nice. Um, so we have that. So now we have our control, but it doesn't do anything. Uh, you can also do debug stuff like um, draw hierarchy. It's pretty nice. 
I have on my YouTube channel. Can can I say that? Yeah, that's okay, right? Yeah, I was just about to link that as well. <laughs> okay, I have on my YouTube channel a, a control rig tutorial, which is not a tutorial in the sense of I show you how it works. It's more like I record the stuff. I'm learning with it because I'm not an animator. I'm not a rigger, but I'm control rig made me so interested in animation that I I'm since <laughs> since March I'm all over with animation and control and and rigging and all that. I love it. I just do want to make a quick plug that if you're watching this on YouTube afterwards, the links that I'm pasting in chat, we put them on the forum announcement page under the resources section. So you can go to the link. It's uh, at the top of the YouTube description or right below the title uh, title description. And you can go to that forum post and you can find all the links that we paste in chat. Cool. Um, so draw hierarchy, for example, is really nice if you want to see if you exported your stuff, uh, right? So for example, x-axis, as I said before, you should check when you export from Blender that the x-axis is a, is, a uh, is a main bone axis and that's a red one and that's all good. Um, so, but let's uh, let's do this now. We have to animate it and we have to implement it and we have so much stuff we, we want to do. Time is running. Um, so the hatch, I want to control the hatch. So set bone transform. Um, now if I change this to global space, you will directly see it's switching there because the transform I'm giving is zero, zero, zero. Uh, so now I can take my, my control and just add the transform there. And as this one, got the data um, from um, the initial transform from, from the hatch itself, it, it really fits. So if I if I select the hatch control now and rotate it, ooh, I can I can control it. It is just one bone. Uh, I, I know you could say, but why don't you directly add the bone and 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 and, and do that? I can I can begin, I could do much more fancy things here, uh, which I skip for now. Um, so Let's do very fast the one for the cannon. So new control, uh, cannon control. Um, and then again, let's go here, move it somewhere near the bone, right click, set initial bone transform. We change the gizmo to arrow, to a two arrow thick like that. And now we have to rotate it like, I don't know, 90 degree here and maybe 90 there. Yes. And then it's a, again, a bit big. So let's make it smaller. Maybe change the color to a nice green. And then we also do an offset on Y, like, I don't know, 40. No, that's too much, like 10. Okay. So now we have a control here, which we can freely move around. So I, I don't want to have that. Um, my cannon cannot move around like super crazy. Um, so I can add a limit. So let's add a limit here uh, to this control and say like, something like minimum is zero. That's fine. And maximum is, I think 40 is okay. So now I can only move it in this direction back and forth. Um, so last thing I have to do is set bone transform, set it to global space. It's doing crazy stuff, but it will be fixed in the moment I'm adding this. And now I have my really simple rig finished. So I can move my cannon and I can move my hatch. Okay, that's cool. So um, that doesn't make an animation, but I have it now prepared in a way I can, uh, I, I, I can animate it. Um, to animate it, so what I will do now is I could go really crazy and do this procedurally and doing some mathematics on top, et cetera, et cetera. And especially in 26, there will come a lot, really, really cool stuff. Um, but for now, I do more the classical approach of making an animation, saving it, and then using it. Uh, so to do so, we go. We, let's go on a new map. So let's just use a default map. Um, let's save that in our pirates. Uh, maybe we do a new folder. Let's do a new folder, which we call Anim Tools or something. So it's just for my 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 little mini pipeline, Anim Map, I call that. That goes in the, this folder, save. And then maybe we also move the control rig there. Um, move there. Um, delete the folder. So, okay, now we are 
nearly prepared. Um, so I get rid of this. I don't need player start. I don't need um, the floor. So if I drag this in now uh, and I put it to zero, zero, zero. So let's move there. Um, then it automatically also creates uh, a sequence. I move it a, a, along. I don't. I don't need that. And then I have the sequencer here, which I can use for the animation. Um, so as I said before, we need an opening the hatch and um, and get the cannon out. And we need a shoot animation. That are the two ones we we need. So. Um, an animation, I can do something only select rig controls. This is a really nice and important checkbox because now I cannot select anything else except my my controls here. Um, but I don't even uh, right now don't even need my controls too much. But you can see here now I can I can do all that what's needed. So fir first of all, um, uh, let's uh, let's start with uh, with the hatch itself. So um, the hatch here here is my Here's the right angle, so let's let's close it first, and then let's make a key here. And now we move forward. Like I don't know, I don't want to make it too long. So like like thirty after thirty seconds, it should be open. So first we go a little bit before, and then I open it like really long, and then I go a little bit further. I'm not an animator, so this might not be. Uh, some people might makes this a little bit better, but I, I go back a bit because what it basically does, if I play now, it is like, you know, it is a little bit like bouncy. Um, let's get that a bit closer. And what I also want to do is ease in a bit. So I go here, but I, I close it a bit more. So now I have a little bit slower start and then, then it's ending there. So that is, that is looking, it's it's a super minor detail, but it can can make already a difference. Um, so now I have it. Uh, I ha have this open. What I also could do is I could open the curve editor. So if I don't like the ease in and ease out, I I I, I could adjust stuff here. So but yeah, that's uh, that's that's basically the first part. So second part is somewhere here. I think I could start getting out the cannon. So let's. Uh, uh, let's, oh, that was a wrong key. I delete this. Um, so let's key Canon X here. Uh, let's make this longer. And then somewhere around, so to be honest, I think the whole animation shouldn't be too long. So we we grab this, we grab that. I, I just put it a little bit. I want to, you know, when a lot of hatches open and the animation is too long, that will be. Um, causing maybe some trouble. So what we basically want, we key here, and then around 45 max, we want actually to have the cannon out, um, uh, like like this. And maybe again, here we do shortly before we roll it out a little bit too much. And then I think 40 is the maximum, so we, something like that. And now let's see how this looks like. That's that's okay. I mean, you could tweak this for hours and make it nice. There's a reason why everything I'm doing, having actually in in, in companies, this is a full job. So there's a reason for that. Um, okay, so w we have that now. And um, so basically what I'm doing now is right click here and say create animation sequence. And then I go to my cannons and then I call it a underscore uh, open hatch. Okay, so what happened now is uh, if I go back to the content browser, go to my corner, then I have here an animation like I would have done it outside of of, uh, of Unreal. So that could come from from whatever tool uh, uh, you are using. In my case, even in Maya. So that's that's uh, so nice, um, and I stay in the whole. I stay in the whole ecosystem the whole time, which makes it really easy to iterate on that because I can save the sequence. Now, if I don't like it, I go back to the map and then change it. Um, so I, I have I have this animation now. So what else do we need? We need uh, we need shooting, right? Um, and I'm a little bit lazy, so let's do. So f first of all, let's 
copy. Let's remove all the keys uh, we had before. And then let's move this as a start position. So I just have those two keys. So that's my end frame uh, from, from the last one. And now we have to shoot, which is basically uh, like, I don't know, we, we should be, this should be really fast. So it, when it's choosing, it's like first going really deeply back and then maybe like one frame later, we get it out a bit again. And maybe when we, when we shoot, we could also do a little detail uh, like, like one, one frame later, we have the hatch like going it back and then and then here coming down again so something like that so let's see how this looks like so yeah it could I could live with this so as uh, again I'm not an animator someone who's specialized in that could do much more out of this but but I'm I'm happy with it it looks like a cannon firing or at least it gives us the idea of what it is. Yeah, yeah. So let's uh, create an animation sequence from that, put it in cannons again. Let's call it R shoot or fire. And now, um, uh, now again, if I go to the content browser, I will shoot. I, I will find my my shoot animation, and yeah, that's good. So I have my two animation, and as I'm a lazy person, the opening hatch played backwards is my closing hatch. So I'm I'm fine with that. Um, and the last thing I would need is um, I would actually need a, a kind of pose for the ready state that it's always like that, and that's not animated. And instead, going to the animating that this is really cool. You can you can with animations you can do so much stuff. I could add stuff here. I could merge them. What I can also do is. Uh, create an asset and then do the current pose uh, and and save that and I, I do that and just call that a ready so it's not really an anim but but that's fine so if i have that now um so i have the opening hatch and i have the ready one which is just a static uh, just static one so uh, let's save that let's close that just to be sure save everything clean up a bit here just in case it crashes you never know um so if i take a look at the anim blueprint now uh, i can find here the opening hatch the ready which is just the still and and the shooting so let's let's connect uh, all the dots now in the anim blueprint so the ready one it's just like the ready one here we just put this in uh, and it isn't really looping. Um, it just takes the last, uh, uh, this last state. And then the shooting, we put in our, our shoot. And maybe it is transitioning too fast to the next one. We will see then maybe we have to add some frames, but uh, that's something we, we, we can do in a second. And then closing hatch is actually our opening hatch, but we don't loop it. And we do something like as a play rate is minus one, which is uh, a reverse. And our start position is like, I don't know, 60% in or something should be, should be maybe nice. Um, and then the opening hatch is just our open hatch. Um, and this is also not looping. So let's see what this did. Um, so right now it's in the ready state and we can test here without, we haven't uh, plugged it in, in, into, into any logic, but we can use this uh, state as this value of the cannon state. So it's ready, so let's shoot. So it's shooting and then you saw it's directly closing. That's what I meant, there's no, uh, there, there's no waiting. So it's shot and directly playing that. And then I do reload it and then it's opening up again and it's coming out and then it's ready and then we shoot again. And then as I said, it's, it, for me, it's closing a little bit uh, too fast. Um, so I fix it now. What do we do? So basically, I can go here and say right click and then um, insert frame after uh, a, 
dependent at the end. So I just say something like, let's add uh, half a second, like 15 frames uh, to the animation. So this is cool. So it's playing the animation and then it's waiting. So that is my easiest way now to, to get around this strange uh, uh, um, very fast transition. So I shoot and then it's closing. So that's nice. So, okay, so we have our animation ready, we have our state machine ready, and now we have to um, to add it to our um, to our boat. So instead of doing this logic of telling the animation blueprint, hey, now shoot, now do this from the boat, I maybe want to have a lot of different cannons and I want to have a convenient way to do that. So first of all, I get rid of, of the skeletal mesh. And now you have all those components. Um, and that are the components that are coming with the engine, but you can make own ones. You can do them in C++. So for example, the last commercial game I did that we did most of the components in C++ and then used them in Blueprint. Um, but uh, I, I keep it Blueprint for now. So basically I go to core, let's do right click uh, and let's find the class we want to do. So there is um, component. So there are two different components, actor component and scene component. An actor component has a transform, so it can have a physical representation. Um, but we want to do a it's child. The, uh, opposite, right? It's the scene component that has a transform. Yes, and I'm always very good. You're I'll, right. Cut that one. <laughs> yeah, very good. Um, so basically what I want to do is, and you can see it here, the primitive component is, uh, is part of the so scene component. Uh, and then you have all the all the different scenes, components, primitive, mesh component, and here's a skeletal mesh component. So I want to make a child of that. Um, so I want to add functionality to the cannon we, we, we just put on the boat. Um, so I do this and then I do BP cannon com component. So now if I open this up and go to the class defaults, nothing is set and I can change I can change that. I add my Canon and I also add my animation blueprint to the animation class here. So now I have that. So if I go now to my Canon and go to add Canon, I can um, find my BP uh, Canon component. So if I add that first, it looks the same, but you maybe you have already seen what it did. It was playing the animation um, and it's playing it each time I'm I'm moving it around, so we have to see in a second what what that is. Uh, so let's let's move it somewhere we we can basically see it. So okay, <laughs> yeah, Canon, keep calm. Um, so let's go back to the animation blueprint and see. Yeah, it is set to shoot right now, so we should set it to ready because each time. It is executed, it is shooting. We don't want that. So we want to set it to ready. So let's go back and now we have it here. It is ready, it is sticking out, it's nice. Uh, if we go. That wasn't a check if Victor is still listening. That was really me mixing it up. I always, I always mix actor and scene component up. The animation state machine cannot make use of blueprint like delay, right? No, it can't. That's the reason why we do this part, if we do it. Delay is something I normally try to avoid. Yeah. Uh, like, so it is. it can cause you a lot of trouble. It can get you stuff really fast done. And there are some cases where you maybe want to use it, but normally I, I try to avoid two things. <laughs> But that's me. And we have internal discussions. With my colleague Short, we have always a hard discussion about using the blueprint, um, the level uh, blueprint. So, and I know Victor is on my side. Don't use a level blueprint. Try to make it everything like modular stuff that you can place instead otherwise of. Otherwise, you lock yourself down to that level with that logic. And if you ever want to migrate that, you have to reset up you know, the actors you're referencing inside the map. Yeah. Yeah, what we did with Long Journey Home, we um, we actually had a parent uh, level blueprint where we did a lot of stuff that was true for all levels and all levels um, inherited from uh, Red Childs of that uh, that a bigger blueprint. That was okay-ish, but still we had some headaches we wouldn't have had if we would have designed it conceptually in a way that everything can be placeable. 
Okay, so now we have that. And now let's make a kind of interface for it. So custom event shoot and another custom event uh, we call reload. So we can tell from outside just shoot. And we don't care what shoot really means. Um, because what shoot means in our in, in our case is we have to tell the animation blueprint um, which state it is in. So to do that, we do get self, and then we get get anim instance, which is a blueprint, and then we can say cast to our our own blueprint. So um, and here uh, we promote this to a variable anim bp, so we can work with this. So at begin play, we just get we just get the animation blueprint, and then in shoot, it's actually super straightforward. We just say state canon set canon state so at shoot we say set canon state and then we set it to shoot and when we reload we just set it to reload it so now someone has to tell the canon what to do but i'm when i try to prototype i try to do it like in the real world so someone on the ship is the master of the cannons and he's telling all cannoneers please shoot now and they do their stuff with shooting and then the cannonball comes out and then there's logic in the cannonball. And that's a little bit what I'm following here. Um, so we have that now. And now um, to test this, uh, we, have go, uh, we have to go back to our, um, uh, to our boat and we have to make the input. So we need to be able to shoot. So um, as last time, um, we just go to uh, project settings and then we go to input and then we add an action mapping and we call it, do you say fire or do you say shoot for something like that in English? Mm -hmm. I think fire is Either better, or right? is technically correct. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Or uh, if sometimes I go the super generic route and I call it like uh, primary action or oh, secondary okay. action, ma main yeah. action. Um, because perhaps we, you know, throughout the prototype stage, we realized, oh, we don't actually want cannons. We want harpoons instead. Um, or, yeah. or, or if you say you're able to control the war galleon and then maybe later on in the game, but in the beginning of the game, uh, you have something completely different with a different kind of ability. And then you can use the same um, input action event to call that. And it's a little bit easier to understand because it's like, oh, wait, it says shoot cannon here when you're, when I'm, actually shooting a harpoon or something. Yeah. Yeah, I call it fire now, whatever. That works. Fire is setting the cannon shot state to shoot. Yeah, as said, at a certain moment in time, you have to do a little bit of refactoring and, and, and cleaning this up. Otherwise, it gets hard. A prototype, when you do a prototype, it has a certain kind of iterations you can do with it, and then it's a mess. And then you have to, you have to fix it up and then, then start again. But some people do that and then release it. <laughs> okay, so what I basically did while we were talking, I just added this import, and then I have only one cannon right now. So I have this cannon, and that's uh, and then and then I can set fire uh, to it. And that's I'm telling that's a component. So it's coming here, and then it's it's shooting. So let's see. So let's go back to our map. So this is the first time. This was a long time implementing stuff, implementing stuff before we could actually see something in the game itself. So let's see. Um, let's turn the boat around. Oh, and one other thing. So maybe we will we will shoot now a lot. So let's, um, let's do some things to our scene so we can do it a bit faster. First, we move this around. Uh, we turn this around so we can see that. And we use the spring arm and get a little bit closer so we can see the stuff um, a little bit more up front. So, and then I don't have to turn around and all that. So now let's let's press a button for shoot. Whoa, you saw? I did. I love it. So we basically, um, uh, we can shoot, but it's not reloading. So I can shoot only, only once, but that is... Uh, uh, that's great. So yeah, the water is great. The water is from an asset pack. So uh, the water and the surroundings here is the only thing I didn't I didn't do. I made the ship and the sails. Um, and, and that's also one thing. Um, I, I I saw some people asking why when we say we we start when you start a game from from nothing, why do you use something like that? I do games since twenty years, 
And especially nowadays where you're locked down at home and doing stuff, you want to treat yourself and you want to watch something beautiful. And um, that's one reason why I, uh, why I tend, especially at the beginning, try to get what I have or what I can grab, which is close to what I have. So it is kind of fun to watch and it makes much so you could do the whole thing what we did so far without this asset pack this is not really the point um and at one point i might even begin to replace some stuff okay so uh as we could see which is super cool let's zoom in when i press this button bam it is shooting and closing so how we are in time it's okay right uh yeah yeah we're doing fine Cool. So let's um, let's do the reload. Um, so the reload is not done by the cannon itself. Uh, someone from outside should tell it. So it's right now. I have everything in the um, in the boat. So for example, at a certain point, you could figure out. Oh my God! I want to have a person you can hire on board that is like better in shooting cannons. And then with the prototype, you're figuring out. Oh, the reload time could be better. They could be more precise, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then you're making values of that, and then putting it into a person, and then you can exchange this. Um, okay, so we have the fire. So what we want to do is when we do reload. Um, we have to know how long we have to wait. So let's let's do a new variable and call it reload time now. And that's the float. And when we fire, we set the reload timer to something like, let's do something fast, two seconds. Um, and then we want to go back here in our event tick. First of all, we decouple this. And here's one note that came later, and I love it. Delta time. When when I did my last commercial game with Unreal Engine, this note didn't exist. So you always had to go from here to everywhere. <laughs> and this is such a small thing, but get real data seconds makes your, um, makes your graph so much cleaner. So next, what I want to do is I do a sequence. Uh, for the flow and then I do the second and then I take the reload timer and I set the reload timer and I take the current value of the reload timer and I do minus delta second so I'm counting down independent of the frame rate and then I set this to my new reload timer and if this is uh, smaller than zero then it should reload. So what it should do then, I have only one cannon, so I do this and then I say, now reload, please. So let's see if this works. So basically I'm shooting, setting it to two seconds. It's counting down. When it reached uh, zero, then it is reloading. And then I should be able to shoot again. So let's see if this works. Okay, are you ready? Do you want to give the fire away? Oh, Come on. Hang on. Safety first. <laughs> it's the best part of the stream. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, I'm firing. Fire. On your command. Nothing we're not, happened. We're not moving, though. No, we're not moving. Probably set your sails first. Yeah, I, I'm setting my sails, but I don't fire, and I don't know why. Well, maybe our crew members are mad and yeah, the crew members <laughs> really... we finally grabbed the wheel. Uh, mm, mm, I'm not sure what happened. Let's see. Mm, 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 mm. Oh yeah, I mean, I think someone in chat didn't didn't really watch carefully. So what I did is, if the reload timer is um, more than zero, which is wrong, so should be less than zero, not more. This is uh, so obvious. That is the stuff that I don't know, even after many years of game development, that's something you do always wrong. So you see, bam, there we are. Fire. So, okay. So it's coming out again. So here we have our state machine in full swing. So we can we can close the hatch. We can see that we can, I can, I can try to fire before, but nothing is happening. Um, so here we go. Very cool. 
Um, okay, but now it is only one. So, and we have much more, much more can. So before we begin to do smoke and all that, let's have a whole, what's called array of cannons, phalanx. I don't know what it's, what's the proper naming is. Which, which word are you looking for? Phalanx, F phalanx, no, array, array of cannons. Chat might now. I'm not sure. I never had cannons on any of the boats that I've operated. No? Actually, that is not true. I did operate a boat that had a tiny cannon. <laughs> wow. It's used for a, a particular day of the year um, and some yacht clubs. They, they have, it, it, the cannons don't shoot any... Um, they don't shoot anything. There's just a little bit of gunpowder in them and it's sort of like, you know, celebration-esque. They can technically, I believe, in, in the U.S. at least, um, they can also be used as a warning. Um, you're required to have three kinds of warnings on a boat um, that loudly can be heard from others. And I, I believe a cannon like that just makes a loud noise is technically allowed. Not one that shoots any, anything, though, but one that just makes a sound. Okay. So what I'm doing now is um, to have a little bit more convenience, I do a scene road. Um, under which I will put the cannons. So I call this cannon, uh, cannons. Uh, I would go with starboard and and um, uh, and port, but uh, I think I do left and right, looking from the behind <laughs> of the boat, uh, just not to confuse people. Um, so cannons are uh, is my right side of the cannon. So I will move my cannon in that. Uh, and then what I do is a control V to duplicate it. And then I will just move it here and then control V to duplicate it and move it here. And then I do control V to duplicate it and move it here and again. And again. Uh, and again, and the only reason, by the way, this cannon is a little bit more up is because I didn't manage to model the, the boat in a way that um, uh, I had space here. So that was okay. So now we have all the cannons, and they are all under this uh, scene road. So um, I already made a function that's called init cannons because I now need to iterate through these cannons all the time, and I don't want to do the ugly stuff like with the sails here like this. Um, so I want to do it a little bit more how it should be done. So basically what I want to do is um, I take the cannons and then there is some helpful um, stuff like get children's uh, components. So now I get a list of all the children's below this and then I can do a for loop. So I can iterate on those. And then I can cast to my BP cannon component. Uh, and now I can add it to a list. So I can make this promote to variable, call this cannons. And then uh, instead of having one cannon, I make an area of cannon. Yeah, he will complain uh, that I have this already. So let's delete this. Um, and then I will go here and say add. And then I can add this one. And now I'm building a list. Um, and then I can freely add more cannons. I don't, just don't care anymore. Um, so that's one thing. And then in the event graph, at the begin play, I, I do this. So I have now this list. So instead, again, instead of shooting here one cannon now, um, I have to do this, I have to work with the list now. So I go over the list and then for each of this cannon, I just say, shoot. Oh no, it's fire. <laughs> I should never rename that. <laughs> this would cost me more headache than it was worse. So, and after that, I set the reload timer. So that's the first thing. And the second here, you can see, I'm currently only doing it for one component. So uh, first of all, um, I need to know what to reload. And here it can get really easy, complicated, because what about I'm shooting and only five of the cannons have reloaded? Uh, what about the other two? Um, so the 
the player has to as a, I have to understand I have to make a decision now what do I want do I want them to finish their reloading and then I can fire the two ones that weren't in the first fire but that gets really fast confusing so what I would do is something like really straightforward saying in the moment I'm shooting everything that is available is shooting and everything else is set to reload and then I reload again that would be nice so um, what I now need to do is I need a second list for the cannons. So I will duplicate that and that call that cannons to reload. So first of all, I get that here. When I fire, I will clean this list. So whatever is in the list, it gets cleared. So nothing is in that list. And once I have fired, I'm adding them to the list of cannons that needs to be reloaded. All right, apologize about that. My audio interface decided to crash. Uh, I'm getting a new one before next week because that was not the first time that happened. It was the first time it happened on stream. So, But we're back, and I believe y'all should be able to hear me. Bangladesh, Hungary. I, I, at the time, I, I asked again where I come from, U.S., How does this chat have a replay option? It's pretty new in, in Twitch overall. Okay, we continue? Yes. I'm really sorry, but my, my, my picture is gone in Discord, but I think that's okay. I can't see you or I can't see me, but, but you have all you need, right? Yep, yep, it's all working. India, really cool. Is, isn't, um, what, what is a game called that is a, isn't it the first game from india on switch or something there, there's an unreal game that just raji? announced it. yeah 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 oh i love that is it raji yeah raji yeah oh I'm, I'm so looking forward for that when i saw the first pictures it was like oh this is so cool and it's and then i figured out it's unreal and i thought oh this is even better <laughs> and i think yesterday they announced that uh they would come to to switch which is really cool i think we uh, spotlighted last week or the week before a uh, nice Okay, so um, where were we? Um, so as said, we have to go through um, so the cannons to reload. Uh, we clear this list, and then each time a cannon is firing, 
uh, we set it, we, we add it to this list. So now in tick, we get this list and then we can get the length of this list. So we can actually check is something in that. So if this is greater than zero, so if nothing is in the reload list, we don't have to do all of this. So that is a little bit of a safety. Um, so if this is bigger than zero, we do this. So we set the reload, we de decrease the reload timer, we set it to zero. So instead of here doing reload only for this component, we know go to our get through this list for each loop again. So, and then each of those we set to reload and then, oh wait. Is it okay to use tick for everything? No, <laughs> it is not. Um, but I do it quite consciously. I said that the last time. So first of all, for the stuff I'm doing here, there is not much cost. So it's basically a dot product and then changing, adding a force to something. And that's something you do constantly in tick. Or I add um, a, a rotation. So this is actually all pretty straightforward, but I know what I'm doing here. You shouldn't do something like, like this. <laughs> get actors of class, and then you go through static meshes. <laughs> so um, that would be something you you want to avoid. Um, but this this stuff here is pretty, pretty, it's not heavy. Um, okay, so let me think. I'm just not going, want to go through through all of them like that. I think it could be a little bit more interesting if instead, of doing this, we don't want to reload them at all at the same time. Let's do it like a progress bar so they are opening after each other. I haven't done that in my original one, but let's try. So basically, we have this list. So let's get the last in that list. And then let's, yeah, oops, that's wrong. Uh, get a copy of the last index. So that's the last one, oh, Q, Q is your friend. Um, and I reload that. And then I, I take that list and I remove an item from the list and that's the one I just, yeah, that's nicer. And that's the one I, I, I just shot. So I re remove that. And then we set the timer again. Set reload timer. So we add that again. And then we do something like one point, I don't know, three or something. So what's cool now is when we shoot, we set the timer. It takes two seconds before the first cannon uh, starts. And then the, he's going, each time the timer is below zero, he's loading the last one, removing it. And then we have in between time. So let's see what it does. Are you ready, Captain? Uh, Captain's ready. OK, you can, give the, you can give the command. Fire. So bam, all shot, all closing. And now, yeah, baby. Nice. This is cool. So I shoot, Chris, shoot again. Chris doing all right. Fire. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was shooting without telling you. Oh, all right. Well, yeah. We're drunken, drunken seamen. I'm sorry. My, my, my crew is independent. OK, that's good. That's what pirates were. They were one of the first democracies, right? I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they share the, they, they, they share the loot at the end. Um, if the if the captain was not nice, he was replaced by vote, I think. So, um, okay, but so you see, this is this is working very very well. Um, so we have we have now we have now that we have now that. Let's check my list. So we did this control rig, put the maps and shoot cannon, reload timer. So I think now it's time for some effects. So basically, when I set back the camera. So oh, what I normally intended to have for this game, and this is 
it is visible, yes, but it is a little bit small. So we need to get more more vooms, more more what's called more more juice, more juice, juice, right? So um, I think we should add some effects. Um, it's another area where I'm not really like really um, in yet. I'm I'm still learning, but let's do a Niagara system. Um, and let's start with something from a template uh, and see what we have there. And there's something called simple, simple explosion and there's some smoky thingy in there. So let's take that FX underscore Canon smoke. Okay, let's see what we can make out of that. So this is Niagara. Um, so basically the new particle uh, uh, system in Unreal Engine. Um, and um, it is really, really cool and powerful. I haven't used it yet to the full extent. Um, uh, if you get time, are you going to get into the wind lines? Yes, yes, I will add the wind lines, but I will add them after I have shown a bit of a Niagara first because they are the more they are a little bit more complicated setup than the other stuff. Mm. So let's see. We have different emitters here in one system. Um, we don't want this one. Let's delete it. And then we have this upward burst. We don't want that one. We only want the smoke for now. So let's do the smoke. So we have a smoke here, which is already kind nice, kind of nice. Um, but what I don't, I, I, I think it should, it should get more like. First of all, it should stay longer. Then I think instead of getting smaller, it should get bigger. So it, it's like. The dust is going up, and then it shouldn't be white; it should be black. Um, so let's try try to do that. So basically, you have emitter update, particle spawn, particle update, and there is some uh, pre-made modules, and you can also write own modules. But I don't go so deep for now. Um, so initial particle. Let's see. Here's a lifetime. So maybe let's make that three seconds. So as I will stay a bit longer, you can see that here directly. That's already nice. If I change the color to black, you will witness something. It's just not appearing anymore. So we have to check the material uh, to see what's going on there. Um, and then the sprite size is 100, but it doesn't change over time. So what I would like to do is in particle update, I want to check if here here's curves. So I, here, for example, is a curve for alpha. So it's blending out over time. And I want to do something like that. So let's press the plus button and search for scale. And then let's do something like scale mesh, sprite size. Um, so sprite size. Um, and then you can see here is uh, here is just values, uh, uh, two values, two vector values. So first, let's make that to a float, vector two from float. So it's coming from one, from, from one number. So if I put a two here, it's just setting it to two. So it's nothing over time or something. So now let's make that a curve. So curve, curve, float from curve. So now it is going over time and you can see now they are getting smaller. <coughs> nice to have a convenient mute. Yes, that's yeah. really cool. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. Uh, so what I want to do is instead of making them smaller, I want to do this where you like like putting on two, which means now you can see they are getting 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 a little bit bigger. Maybe I can add another key to the curve. I can I can adjust the curve so I can say maybe it's more dynamic if if they get bigger a bit later. Then I can also say it is uh, what kind of curve it is as user, and then I have tan tangents I can uh, I can manipulate. Um, so I can I can make it a nice nice curve. Yeah, so again, at each feature, you can tweak for hours <laughs> to get to get a feeling for it. So that th that's the first thing. So before we make it black, let's put it uh, on the ship so we can see something. So now is a question, where would we spawn it? So I could go here now and I could do something. When we fire, I say start or um, uh, Niagara. Uh, spawn, I think it's spawn system or something like that. System at location, blah, 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 give all the numbers. Really, I could do it that way. Uh, 
But the more convenient way is let's go back to our shot. And when, when I have here my, my shot, uh, then I can scrap here around and then I can see, okay, here's a shot done and here is some tracks. So here's a notifier track. So what I basically can do, I can make a right click and say, play Niagara particle effect. And then I choose my particle effect and maybe I make a little bit of an offset to push it a little bit out. So now let's see, boof. You can see, so it, in the moment it is, it is triggered by the animation somewhere. So if I did this, oh, let's go back and do our spring arm closer again so we can see it and test faster. So let's make it big and ready. Ready. Boom. <laughs> so uh, this is already pretty nice. Um, so boom, it is. Uh, uh, I noticed some things. So first of all, it is a lot. So maybe we want to reduce the amount. Uh, second is I don't see any of the animation anymore because it's so dense. And um, I think this powder shouldn't be white. It should be black. Um, so let's do the black one before. Let's firstly do, uh, here we have burst. So we can reduce the number to maybe like five uh, per cannon. Um, and then the next thing I want to do, I go to the renderer and then here I find the material. So if I jump to that, that's in the engine. Uh, I don't want to manipulate, never do that. Never manipulate the stuff directly in the engine. If you want to use something, then do what I'm doing now. I'm just taking that and copying it over, um, copy here. So I have my own version of that. And then I even call it mat M, material, uh, cannon, smoke. So now I have my material and I do something directly because I always forget it if I don't do it. I should also assign it um, to my uh, particle effect. So now I have my own material I can tinker with. Um, but if I would have changed it in the in the engine itself, then all my projects that are using the engine would have changed, which is bad. And when I cook the version, then I maybe have a mess because all my stuff is everywhere. Um, so uh, yeah, I have, I've made that, I've made that. So let's open this material and take a close look. So basically right now that is surface, additive, unlit, um, and that makes it hard to have a black uh, particle color. Um, so first of all, I don't need this two-sided and all that. Uh, second is I click here and then I say for now, uh, this is actually translucent and lit. Um, that can be expensive really fast. So be careful what you what you do here and how often you do it and how much overdraw and shader complexity you are having. But for me, with this little smoke and with this little things I'm doing here, I'm fine for now to attach the particle color, which is a parameter that comes from the particle effect uh, and push this in. So let's go back here. And now when I go to initial particle, I should be able to push this down to more like gray. And maybe I start with 0 0.7 or something transparency. And now let's see how this looks like. Boof. I think that's cool. Can the smoke blast a little bit forward? Yet I could do it. Uh, I could uh, add a velocity in the direction, but Let's, let's move forward because as I said, for every part, you could have a list of 20 things you would like to add <laughs> and, and do uh, in more detail. And I want, we, w we need still cannons. And then you will see in the moment we're adding uh, cannonballs. So in the moment we're adding cannonballs, we open the Pandora's box again for new stuff. So, but this is already pretty cool. So next thing uh, we want to do is let's do some sound because that is something I'm doing games for quite some long time, quite a long time, and I'm still completely astonished uh, each time when you add sound to your game, what a big difference that is. Um, so I got a, uh, this morning I, I bought a, a asset pack with some sound. I don't have, I don't have a big sound library here. And also a small disclaimer. So even if this is a, it's an Epic stream, an official on, on, on the Unreal channel. Um, uh, this asset pack is bought by myself personally, so it's not. Um, so I, I ask uh, Victor if this is okay, if I can use just the stuff I bought uh, to do this. Um, 
just that you know. Victor, I'm so looking forward to it that, that your live vest has a mail function and it's just like opening. It would be so cool. I am not going to pull the thread all <laughs> yeah, over here. Really, I, it would be super. Thing. It was so extremely funny. If you, yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> worried of the or something And you move around and... <laughs> <laughs> There's a small chance. It's there. Very unlikely. Very unlikely. That's one that was the last thing he said. <laughs> um, so basically, um, I I have some uh, I have some sounds, and I um, let's bring them over. So let's start with uh, with the shooting sounds. So I migrate them. So I can I can show you. I have another project here where I tested some of the things this morning. Um, uh, so basically, what I'm doing is uh, I imported them from an asset pack. And then I did my tests here, and now I can migrate it. So you can select every asset, and then you can say migrate, and then it's telling you to save stuff, which I haven't. And then he's giving you a reference. So if you have a material, for example, that's referring a texture, he's he's recognizing that and telling you, oh, if you want to migrate that, then this, 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 and this has also to be migrated. So we, we do this now. And then he's asking me where I want to put it. Uh, and I have a lot of projects here. So here is our stream content folder. And now it should have migrated it. And um, let's ch uncheck engine content. And then we have pirate sounds here. So I have this. Do you hear that? Yeah. So they're, they're cool. Um, so we want to add them now um, uh, uh, to, to, to the shot. So what I'm basically doing is I do a sound cue. Um, and I call that SFX Canon Fire. OK, so a sound cue, basically, I can do a little bit of logic here. And it has a lot of settings. I can, I, I'm not a sound guy. Um, and um, there's a new sound engine, and there's really, really great stuff in that. Um, so uh, I cannot go too deep here, um, but I can show you the absolutely basics. And the nice thing is, when I um, I don't um, I don't want to spawn um, the sound wave directly. Uh, if I spawn the sound cue. I can do stuff in the sound queue and I don't have to change the code if I want to change uh, anything here. Um, as far as I understand, and, and that is up to other people who are more into that, um, there are a lot of new cool features uh, in the sound engine um, y y you can use, but I cannot, <laughs> as I said, uh, sound, sound wise, uh, I think that's, uh, that's the part I'm, I'm lacking a bit. Um, we have a couple of streams covering the new. Uh, audio features. Oh, nice. Oh, that's good. So, but I can I can show you a nice trick. Uh, yeah, which I, I learned gonna... too late. <laughs> so you can select all of them, then do a right click and do random, and then it's automatically connecting them. Ah, oh, I wish I would have known that. Yeah. So uh, that's the first thing I want to do. So, but now when I play the sound cue, you can see this. It's randomly picking one of the four sounds. I could even get more out of that if I manipulate them uh, with a pitch and, and volume, etc. The other thing I want to do is, um, as I have a lot of cannons, and I don't want to go too much into detail, how how uh, too much into to the rabbit hole of how many are playing when and and etc. Um, I'm doing something uh, with the. Let me see where it is. Um, it's a concurrency, right? Yes, I'm, I'm searching that. There it is. Um, so I'm overwriting the concurrency, and that means I can decide how many of them are played. And let's say, like, I don't know, five or six, maybe. And then I can say, and then I can say what, what's happening. Uh, stop fastest, and then old, farthest, and then oldest. Um, so with this little trick, I don't have to hassle so much about how how I I just trigger them and then I don't have to uh, think too much about that. So let's trigger them and we do it actually the same way as we did for 
for the smoke here because we can do it in the animation. So I do, I add a second track just for keeping an overview. Add notify, play sound. So basically here it is. And then I do my sound cue. Um, let's see that the sound cue is not looping. That's something I'm sometimes doing wrong. And then <laughs> when you are wondering why it is not stop playing. So I think it's not looping by default. It's on the uh, actual samples and not the output. Ah, yeah, yeah, right, right. And they don't loop by default. Oh, I have to close my window, otherwise. Here it is, quarter before 10. So I have the first insects coming in, because it's so nice light. So let's see. Nice. I think that's already pretty nice Ship for it. just a prototype. So that's cool. I mean, we don't have cannonballs yet, but we already, it feels already like, like a game. So for that reason, I can only encourage everybody to think about sound early on, even if it's just like super, super easy to implement. And maybe it's not the sound you want to have at the end, etc. but it makes such a big difference. I have the, you get already a feeling how responsive it is and how it feels. So let's, let's say a little bit. So and here you can see already a problem we were facing because uh, the cannons are sometimes looking up and sometimes looking down. You will remember that when we uh, when we when we do the cannonballs now. Okay, so cool. Um, let's check my checklist. Um, so I think before we continue, we do the other side um, of the cannons to have that complete. Um, so as I said, we have this, uh, I made this root. Um, and the cool thing is we just duplicate this now. And then we call it Canons L. And as it all children, ch child of the, of this root bone, I can get to the root bone. And then I said the scale for minus, for, for Z is minus one. And then magically I did it wrong. Okay, why are you now? Should it be on Y? Yes, you're right. Here we are. Okay, so now we have cannons on both sides. And now you can see it would actually become more and more complex only with this cannons. I, I think the cannons are a really good example um, about how complex even simple games can be. And um, this is a good example when you explain to someone who's just playing games and talking about how difficult, uh, how, how, how lazy developers are. This is a really good example to explain why it's not, I mean, how, how long? We are now three, three and a half hours in. This is pretty impressive what we get done, but you also can see how much time we have to spend on single things to make it like nice and good. Um, okay, so let's let's go back um, because uh, currently only one side will really fire. Uh, we have this init cannons um, and uh, we are iterating on that. And currently we go only through, uh, through, the, through the right one. So instead of doing this, we are actually adding a target here and say uh, array. So, so now we extended our function and instead of doing it inside the function, we can just say init cannons right and, and init cannon uh, left. So, and now, hopefully, we are firing both sides. Yes, that looks good. So, but what's also happening is first the <laughs> first side is, is reloading and then the other side. So now you have actually begin to think about oh, how would it, this play is really bad because if I do this and then I cannot shoot anymore. Why? I can't see it. So maybe now you want to link, um, you want to link like both sides, like it's always loading uh, first, second, third of bo on both sides. And then you have to decide where do we shoot? Do we shoot always on both sides? No, that feels bad. 
can the player decide if you play if you shoot on the left side or on the right side that's maybe too complicated do you have ai that's deciding oh you have a ship on the left side then you are shouting on the left side if you have a ship on the right side so you can see again another rabbit hole we can go uh, into but this looks so cool i love it it looks that's even great. a bit better <laughs> than the one i made first okay so we we, we have that um so we are finished with that. So let's make a cannonball. Um, because right now we can make we can make what you said with the boats you drove. We can just make a little bit of sound and noise, but no harm, no harm is done. Um, let's do some harm. Let's do another, we do an actor, a BP cannon. So we want to, a cannonball. So we want to spawn a cannonball. Um, so let's make a cannonball first. So we want um, a sphere, which is pretty nice. It's just a static mesh, and uh, the engine also already gives us a sphere. So next is we don't want a white cannonball, uh, but we want uh, we want a black one. So let's make an own material for that. Material cannonball, really straightforward one. So we just do black, and then we uh, want to do um, let's control the roughness okay we are not this kind of pirate we are a little bit more dirty we don't polish our cannonballs every day oh that sounds wrong um so let's do something like that 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 looks like a cannonball nice so then we go back and then we add this so now we have a cannonball okay let's spawn that so the question is, how do we spawn that? Because right now, and when do we spawn it? So where do we spawn it? And when do we spawn it are our main questions right now. So we, we have this shooting, but um, the logic itself, so the boat or the cannon or the component um, doesn't know at all when the firing has been done. It's just telling, you, telling the animation, please play now the shoot animation. And then everything's here. So now we have to report back so to say so we have to tell the, um, the animation blueprint what to do and there's a really nice way to do so first of all we add another track and then we do add notify and we can add a known an own one so we call that uh, just shot um cannon cannonball i don't i don't have a good name cannonball shot whatever so we, we call that here. So here, um, and that's really nice. An animator could move that around if we change the animation, etc. It doesn't have to touch the code at all. So we go to our blueprint, and now we go to the mvent graph, and what we can do here is um, we have now a notify here. So cannonball event anim cannonball shot. So if I do that and do print, for example, here, let's see if this is already working. So if I'm here and shooting, so it's saying hello. Um, so instead of saying hello, it should <laughs> it should generate. <laughs> it's nice. Hello. That's how pirates um, greet greet each other, right? We, 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 we can say we can say R. Okay, that's better, <laughs> right? Sure. <laughs> okay, so no, now is the question: How can we get from the animation blueprint? To the cannon because I want actually the cannon to manage what is what is shot and where this shot. Um, so I can use event dispatcher, which is nice. So I do event dispatcher on cannon shot, and I can call it here. So basically, what it what this is doing now, this animation blueprint, and the moment the animation is triggering, that is shouting into the world, "Hello, I have shot a cannon." So now is the question, how can I listen to that? So let's go back to our Canon component. And we here we have our animation blueprint. And if I do assign now, I have access to this event. So basically, when the animation blueprint is shouting into the world, hello world, I want to shoot a cannon, um, then I can listen to that. So now each cannon I have on board is getting this event. So now I can do <laughs> just to see it's working. R is a new hello world. Real creative here. Yeah. So, so my R is is reaching the right point. So now my cannon, my cannon uh, knows about that. So instead of saying R, 
I want to spawn the Kenborn. So let's do spawn actor, actor from class. And then we do our Kenborn, BP Kenborn. So we spawn it. So now we know when, the question is where. So if I split the transform, then the question, where does the location come from? Um, so how do I know where to spawn this ball? I could do now fancy stuff like getting the location and making an offset, but there's a much easier and nicer way. And I can use, um, uh, I can use, I can go to the skeleton here. And then for the cannon, I can attach a socket to the, uh, to the cannon. So um, it is moving with the cannon. So let's do, let's do that and say cannon ball spawn location, position location. Um, so it is there right now. So let's, let's move it to a position that makes more sense, like, like in front of the cannon. So maybe where it can't hit anything else. Uh, and now we have that. And when we go back to our component, as it is a component, this is really cool, get socket location. And then we add our socket name here, and then we put it in here. And here we go. So now we know when and we know where. So let's see what's happening. And I think, let me check something. I saw something before. Um, currently, our cameras do a collision test. Uh, and you will see in a second why I had to remove this. Um, so, OK, Captain, are you ready? Ready. OK, give the order. Fire. <laughs> so we we see two things here first of all um our cannonballs might be a little bit too big a little yeah um second of all when we take a look i think in the output lock when we stop this uh he will um he should have complained a lot and maybe i click too fast um, but basically, uh, he, he will complain because uh, the cannonball has no simulation physics. So that's the reason why it's not moving and not doing anything. So let's first check that. Let's override mass. So our our ship is, I don't know, I think we made it 200 kilograms. So let's let's make really like two kilogram uh, of, of mass here to have a little bit of control. That's the first thing. Uh, and the next one is we want to make it a bit smaller. So... I don't know what. Uh, let's do the three. So I I, I scale it down to um, thirty percent of of its size. So okay, uh, I give the order now because this is just a test shot. Okay, go ahead. So nice, they are spawning, but yeah, they they are just falling to the ground. And you can you can even see this if I do it here, and shoot, and then eject. <laughs> and you can see here my little nice <laughs> cannonballs rolling around. So be careful because if we spawn a lot of them, <laughs> so we also might um, want to control a little bit when we want to get rid of them. Um, so basically, uh, he here we are. We have the cannonball. It is spawned. Um, and the last part that's missing is we should add the force to it. So we should push it, Let's push it somewhere. And here again, it's a prototype. Normally here you should have to do some magic, like maybe aiming and then calculating the velocity. And maybe you would not do this with physics. So I, I highly recommend it's nice to start with this, but um, you will see also in a second why you want maybe not use force but control um, the velocity and 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 the ballistics uh, of this by hand. So we add a force. The question is what kind of force uh, do we uh, do we add here? and and now again comes a bit um, uh, now again comes a bit what I said before. the boat is rolling left and right. so the cannons actually showing into the water. So if I just add a force here, um uh without uh, uh without thinking of the uh how to say uh, 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 the, the angle uh, so i could do something like that get forward vector of this component 
So um, as we made everything on X direction, forward is X. So that's that's nice. As all of this is clean and the rotation is all nice, um, uh, so we can use this. So we have the forward vector, and I could just do something like um, forward vector multiplied by, I don't know, 1,000, put this in, say it is a change, and then let's see what's happening. So, yeah, that was... I'm going forward we, a little. <laughs> they moved a bit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but not much. Um, one other thing is I still think they are too big, and I think we should make them a little bit lighter. Um, and we should do like a bit smaller and then add a zero and see how it goes. Yeah, it was already not too bad, but you can see again without any additional help, this is um, hard to read. Uh, in which directions I go. So basically what I do, I do take the forward vector and now I multiply it with a vector and I say, I multiply you with one, one, zero, which means I don't care about your um, your Z vector. So up and down, I, I don't care if you are looking inside the water or if you are looking inside the, the sky right now. Uh, and then uh, I, I, I could directly plug it in, but what is nice now, currently you can see it already it's like a um it's like a rocket um array like everything is the same so let's add a bit of random so it's a little bit of a vector let's split this so first of all we always want to face the cannon a bit up like i don't know 30 degree up um so this is already nice and then we can do random a random float in range so we do something like I don't know, between zero and zero 05. Add this here to do. And now this is something I wouldn't ship with, but for now I think it's okay. I do a little bit of a delay and I do the delay when shooting also randomly. So here comes my uh, my little my little guy on the cannon. Is uh, some of them are not the fastest when we when you shout fire. Not everybody is reacting the same way. Uh, so with this, I should now have a little bit of randomness uh, where they where they go. Okay, still not enough um, uh, force. So let's add let's add a little bit more. Like I I think I should double it, and then we should be maybe fine with this. Yeah, maybe double is a bit much, and you. But it feels, I mean, now also with the sound, it feels so much better. So mm -hmm. maybe do this. Okay, so what I think now, what, what I don't like is um, we need to see the trail. Uh, we need to see something. Um, so let's add another effect. So we can have a cannonball trail. Um, Let's do here FX a Niagara system. And then uh, let's see, is there anything? Yeah, we need. No, wait. I think what I do is new system, create an empty system. So we do completely empty system FX um, Canon trail. So what we basically want, we want to see the, how, how the ball goes. And then um, we have a can here, and then we add a emitter. Uh, let's show engine content, and there is something like this fontaine. I think that we can we can go from there. So as I'm not an expert in uh, in Niagara, um, I I try to get something that the engine is already doing that's close enough to what I want to do, uh, and 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 then adjust that. Um, so. We don't want a sprite renderer, we want actually a ribbon. So we do a ribbon. Uh, so we see this ribbons coming up there, that's uh, that's nice. Um, so next, uh, uh, next we initialize particle here, but what we now need to do is we need to initialize as a ribbon. 
Um, so basically, I think we can we can stay with the standards for now. Uh, we remove the particle effect. We remove the sprite renderer. So we have only this. Then we don't need add velocity to cone. Uh, and then I also disable gravity force. So now it doesn't look like much, but you will see in a second uh, how this can work. And then the renderer needs the material, but I think there's a ribbon material, default material, that's fine for us for now. Um, okay, so what else we need to do? Um, we need... Uh, this, this is the moment where I would just try it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I reduce a little bit the spawn amount and then we will add it. So instead um, instead of, um, of uh, we have no animation or stuff. So what we now do is we, we add it as a component. So there is a near our particle system component. We just add that to the ball. We call it trail. And then we take our... Where is it? Cannon trail. So now let's see if this is maybe already pretty close to what we want. I'm a little bit excited. I'm not sure. Yes. Look at that. That that went easier than I and I expected. So but this is cool. So now we have trails. Um, so you see, it is actually pretty easy to do to do this to 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 do this really like like fast and like like having something and then then later you can you, you can make this much more sophisticated and much cooler and much 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 more and um and now i could talk to uh, uh, an artist who is really good in that and and show him what i want and then 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 we can work together on that um so yeah n now i have the ribbons and what you what you can see now is um when i shoot what you cannot really see is when i hit the water um, and when the cannonballs uh, is they're not really sinking to the ground, so th there's no real visibility of the water plane. So let's fix that. So let's go to the ball now. Um, so the cannonball, and um, for the cannonball, we uh, we need a bit of um, uh, uh, we need a bit of logic. Um, so f so first of all. Um, what I tried, and there might be an easier way to do it, like what I would do in a second. The ball needs to understand where the water plane is. And as you can see, this water plane is with Gerstner waves. So the height of the water on every point is different and, the, and it's moving. Um, and you could say, yeah, but just do zero or like the, you, you will witness it. You will see it if, the, uh, if it hits uh, not the right spot. Um, so we have to figure out when the when does the ball hit um, hit the water plane? Uh, and I didn't manage to do it with an overlap or something like that. So what we basically doing um, is something that I don't think this is elegant, um, but I will do it anyway. So at begin play, uh, we get actors of class. So we have to we have to figure out where our ocean manager is because that's the only one who actually knows. Uh, where uh, our water is at a certain spot because that's uh, how the ship movement is also done. So we we try to get that. I don't even care if, if none is there, then I will have um, a third here, but but that's okay. Um, if the ocean manager is not there, the whole game is not working. So it's completely okay that he's uh, complaining um, then. So ocean manager. So when the get ball gets spawned, uh, he knows at least there is the ocean manager. Um, and then again, I, I do the tick. And uh, when I get the ocean manager, um, there is a function that is called, and we saw that when we watched that last time, evaluate water height. So, and what this is basically doing is I can have a point location, and that is in this case, my ball. So it's an actor location. Last time it was um, this points I had to define um, on the boat, um, and then I need a transform, and I just get the uh, get actor transform. Where 
Where is it? There's no actor transform, sorry. We have to stop here. <laughs> Get actor transform, there it is. Um, and then point thickness, I don't know, five. And then the time is um, get uh, get re the time is how much time has passed. Um, so that is get real time seconds. Um, and then it's telling me if this point is now under the water. So I can branch and saying, okay, if you are under the water. Um, I want to do some stuff. So something that's really easy and already noticeable is I can set the linear damping, which means I can make it like not flying anymore, but like having a really heavy, heavy damping, which should feel like it is um, uh, falling to the ground. Next I want to do is I want to disable the trail. So set active to zero. And then, um, uh, we can do that later. So and th and then I want to spawn an effect, so I can uh, I can see where 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 it hits. So but before we do that, let's check if this is already noticeable. Yeah, you see. So if uh, up front, yeah, you... the damping effect is great. So I th I think the damping helps already a lot to make the feeling that. It, it has hit something and now it's sinking to the ground and also that the trail disappears. So the last step or the last two steps, again, let's have an effect to uh, to show that. And there's funnily enough, new system from a template. So let's do that. There is a radial burst. I think that's really close. FX water splash. So let's see if we can change this in a way um, um, uh, in in a in a way that it's like a water splash. Um, so first of all, I want all the effects. So I, I keep everything, but I want to turn it around. Um, so right now it is uh, adding a velocity uh, from point. Um, that's something I want to replace with add velocity uh, in cone. So I disable that. I oops. I, yeah, I double clicked and then you can see all the modules that are existing. You can actually study them and check what they are doing. I don't want to go in that rabbit hole right now. Um, so we do a velocity in cone and we do upwards. So now you could see at least at the first event, they are going upwards, but maybe not, uh, not enough. Um, So let me double check that I remember what, what else I want to do. So particle, uh, maybe we don't want them to stay so long. So let's do it a small water splash. And then the velocity, let's keep playing this. Another thing I want to do is let's make this shorter so we can see it. OK, so now that's better. Um, so velocity, uh, velocity strength, I don't know. Let's try something like, th oops, uh, no, 200, it's maybe too much. No, it's not enough, 400. So you can see already this is going up and uh, that's that's uh, that's nice. Um, so what else, uh, the, the initial size is okay, I think. Um, sphere location is also okay. We have to do, let's copy this over to this one. So we have that on both. So what here is happening, the, lead, the, the ribbon trail, um, ta trail leader is a particle um, that's there. And here the ribbon, it has an event handler and that is listening to this one. So this one is just following that one. So for that reason, I don't have to touch. Uh, I don't have to touch this one. So one other thing is loop behavior. We set the loop behavior to once and duration to one. So we only want one water splash and not like um, endless looping or five times looping ones. So this is already nice. Um, and I think um, the last thing I want to do, gravity is okay, drag is okay, sprite size. Um, 
uh, scale uh, is okay. Maybe we make the initial one like a little bit bigger. That's a little bit more visible. And now let's test it. So go back to the Canon and now um, I can show the third way we can we can do it and we can spawn a system. So spawn system at location. So and then we choose we choose our water splash and then um, oh sorry. <laughs> You're good, Andreas. We've been going for a while now. So take take a little water break. You're doing well. No, I it's, it's cool. Yeah. We've we gone through a lot already. We got about... Okay. Do you think we can wrap this up in about 15 minutes? Or do we need a little longer? Mm, no, no. Let's, let, let's do that. I can okay. show the rest. I, I would do... Um, no, I, I think that's possible. I can give you mm, 20. So we, need a, we need a location. So get uh, actor location. So we just need the location of where the ball is in that moment. I think that's completely okay. Uh, get actor location, um, scale, etc. is okay. Auto destroy, auto active. So this is fire and forget. So we just spawn something there. So if we did it right, yeah, it's a bit much <laughs> and they don't stop. <laughs> oh, they, they stop or they don't stop. You made oh, fountains. wow. Yeah, that's a bit, uh, that's a bit, uh, that's a bit too much. So Magical we have some cannonballs. So let's let's see what's going wrong here. So it's taking that from the system. It's only playing once. The loop duration is is one. Um, the spawn count. Oh, we had audio break again, did we? Are you there, Andreas? Yeah, I'm still there. Oh, okay, okay, cool. <laughs> I'm still there, but I messed up my. Oh oh oh. I yeah, there we go. I don't know what happened to my particles. Uh, that was strange, and my PC is getting really loud. I, so the spawn count. Uh, I, I I think we don't. We don't need this amount. Um, so I'm not 100% sure why this is not water splash actor location. This is all fine. But why is he spawning endlessly? So let me check. Emitter status, burst, initial particle. OK, system. It's all taking the stuff from the system, and the system is is uh, set to once. So I'm not 100% sure. Maybe I didn't compile. Let's see. No, it's spawning actually a lot. Oh, yeah, sure. Sure, it's always underwater, right? <laughs> <laughs> so the ball is still underwater. So it actually, it, it, it makes sense. So what we are doing here is in event tick. <laughs> so this is really, really bad. <laughs> so in the moment it is underwater, it's all the time calling all of this. So it's, it's not stopping spawning. So what we need is a variable cannon ball. Um, so what do we do? Um, cannonball active, we call it cannonball active. Come on, type it active. And you could so, make this entirely event based as well, right? I could, yes. But what I'm currently doing is I'm assuming I will have more cases where I want to disable the ball. So basically, I'm disabling it here. And then I'm asking the ball if he is still active. So in this way, I can also say, like, I don't know if it hits land or something like that or whatever, any other reason why I want to disable it from outside, uh, maybe. So let's see if this is now. Nice. nice. Yeah, we give a little bit, we give a little bit too much uh, energy to the ball. So let's uh, reduce this force a bit. 
On the other hand, the camera is pretty close, so... Oh! <laughs> yeah, nice! Nice! That is not enough. Yeah, that's the reason why you might not want to go with physics. Um, I think I... Okay, cool. So, last, uh, not, not really last thing, but another thing is uh, to even emphasize this more. Um, I will go and import some more sounds. So, let me just import the whole thing here. Something I wanted to mention in regards to marketplace assets and the way that you're doing it is a, is a good way where you, you add the marketplace asset pack to a different project and you take a look at the assets, figure out which one you want, and then you migrate them over to your real project. The reason why yes. that's good is because otherwise you can real quickly clobber up your main project and make it much larger than it needs to be if you just keep adding all of these assets packs to it. And you'll maybe you only use one or two assets from it. And that way you have to later on go up and clean it. Which ones are we using? Which ones are we not using? It can get confusing real fast. And especially if you're... Um, using source control and you have to push all of that every time and, and everyone needs to download it and no one really needs those assets. It's much better to have a, I, I call my pack like marketplace migrate and then I generally keep one for every engine version. Um, yeah, same, same here. Um, uh, same here. And, and most of the time you don't want everything. Like, I mean, I'm not using a full ready thing and just put it there. I'm just like, oh, it has parts I, I need. So the sound pack has much, much, much more sounds. And instead of having all the stuff inside, I'm, I'm just taking the ones I'm really needing. So um, what I'm here basically doing is the same as we did before. Uh, so I have a water splash sound. Um, and then I uh, random. Oh, that's nice. He doesn't do that. But I didn't know that. Um, random. Um, so basically, I do exactly the same. And I do also the same with a splash with a, a concurrence a C. So I say something like uh, seven, seven sounds. That's fine. And then here where I do this, uh, before I do that, I can now say... So, so before, we also use animation. And now uh, I say play sound at location. And then again, I take the location where the ball is, and then I say, oh, let's switch off engine. Otherwise, it gets really fastly cluttered. And then cannon water. And then let's see. Oh, from from what I from what I remember from my first test, we should make this whole queue not too loud. Okay, so let's see. Nice. Yeah. Could uh, tweak the mix a little bit, probably forever, yeah. just like all the other things. But So now we, we have that. Um, and actually, now I could already make a second player. So if we would sit in front of the PC together, we could make a second player, and then we could already start to shoot each other, but we wouldn't we wouldn't hit hit each other. So um, the absolutely last thing I'm doing, and then then we call it a day, is uh, we have to see if we if we hit something. So um, I'm let's see. Um, I think I move over to my other project now, uh, just that we have enough time to to wrap it up. Um, so basically, that's all what we what we did here, spawning all that and doing the splash, etc. So what I would do now, um, and and um, it is a little bit, it, it, it is still a little bit to do, um, but we should come to an end. So basically, um, there is a hit event. So when this hits anything. Um, and it's still active, then I'm adding a force to whatever is hit. Um, and we are spawning an explosion, which is also just a really fast made um, uh, Niagara thing. And we play a sound, uh, another sound at that location. And then after a small delay, which is more for the physics, we 
um, disable the physics. We, physics. we disable uh, the collision. We even set the visibility of the sphere, so our cannonball to, 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 to not visible. And then we deactivate the trail. The reason we are doing that is if we would directly destroy this whole thing, the trail disappears. And that looks really, really weird. Uh, so um, the trail shouldn't, when the ball hits something, disappear. So basically, we are disabling everything so the trail can run to the end. And then after five seconds, it's calling destroy uh, after time. And destroy after time doesn't do anything else than destroy the actor. Can I uh, so, mention a little nice tip there where you can skip one function? Yeah. Instead of doing the timer for uh, uh, doing a timer there, you can just set lifespan. Oh, right. Yes, that's good. That's how I like, because then it's, it's yeah. just taking care of a system that's already there in, in the background. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Good point. Um, so th that's, that's the only part I did here. And then, then you have basically <laughs> this. So what we also, I also play an ambient sound. And now, if I like getting closer to this shipwreck, you're a pirate that bombards ships that have already. And if I hit it, if I hit it, yeah, that ah, that's uh, that's the reason why you want to have a little bit more control over that. So. It is already fun to play. I, I, I spawned two ships and played with my daughter really briefly today. Um, and that's something I, I, I would like to prepare and put on itch.io. Um, but it is, um, there you go. Uh, it is pretty hard to play um, because it is physically, uh, it is with physics and there's no, there's no help from the game at all. Um, yeah, so. And that's the arcade part, right? Sorry? Um, when, you, when you earlier mentioned that you wanted more of an arcade-y um, yeah. kind of game, that's where you essentially held the player, right? So one of yeah. those things yeah. would be you don't have to, you know, pull the cannon uh, back, load, you know, clean it, load it, right? All of that is just put into one thing. Yeah. One I mean, you can decide with this prototype, I can decide in which direction I want to go. I even mm -hmm. made one version where you have to control the sails with the right thumbstick. So you, ha you have to adjust the sails and then you are faster if you put them in the right direction of the wind. Um, another thing I did and we had to skip where I adding a hut. Uh, so that's also a very simple thing, but it, it's using all what we have done before. We spawning uh, we, we, we are spawning in HUD, uh, and that is just two images, and the second one is a is an error, and that is rotated uh, when the wind is changing. So that's basically extremely straight uh, forward. Um, and um, and the last uh, thing I have in addition to what we achieved today um, is um, is uh, where is it? Uh, is 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 the wind? So the uh, let's go into the boat. So what you can see here when you're flying around, I, I wanted to have one additional, uh, one additional um, a hint for the for the wind itself. So you can see here some some wind vanes uh, that are. You can even see them here, like these white stripes of wind that showing the wind direction, um, and that's basically uh, also just. Um, taking an existing uh, material, uh, an existing um, uh, system here, um, spawning um, spawning wind markers, and then they are not even rendered, as you can see here. So that's just spawning up particles, and they get a little bit of curl noise, so they're moving a little bit left and right. And then uh, here is a ribbon that is following that, that is scaled uh, a bit over, over time. That's it. Um, and then I attach that to the boat and rotate it um, with the wind, so um, yeah, basically, basically uh, that's it. So now it would be in a status where you could either think about multiplayer, or um, I, I, I even have a, a very first, uh, and that's really the last thing I will bother you with, a very first version of something like an uh, AI. Um, 
so it's not really an AI. Uh, it is, uh, uh, I, um, I, I decoupled the input uh, from what the ship is really doing. So if, if I take a look at my, my ship here, um, instead of having the input directly doing stuff, the input is saying sail hoist, sail reef, and then I have functions who are doing that. Um, and the reason I did it is I, I did an AI controller, and this AI controller is manipulating, it's possessing a ship like the player, and then it's giving this orders. So it set says, uh, set sails or control the ship. So now here I have actually a ship that in a moment it will turn around and try to follow me. Um, and when it gets close to me, so this one doesn't have sound. Uh, when it gets close to me, it will try to turn around and, and just shoot. It's really dumb. Um, but basically now I have a good basis for uh, begin to use behavior tree or something like that to make it more sophisticated using um, environmental query system to decide where are rocks, what do I have to avoid. Um, so I have to decide now for myself where I want to go with this. Um, but basically um, I, could, I could do multiplayer, I could do local multiplayer, which is already there, um, or I could try to do a little bit of AI. So that's, uh, that's it. That's quite a bit. Thank you so much, Andreas, for coming on and <laughs> walking us through all this. I think we're both ready for... Uh, I, I definitely need to eat lunch now. It's already 4.30. And <laughs> feel, feeling like I'm in need of some sustenance. You're um, so cute. If you all have been watching us from the beginning of today's stream, thanks for hanging about. Um, happy to hear... Oh, I should take a double check, see there were no lingering questions just before we're done. Mm. So I did see some questions come up about sort of, uh, can you also make it maybe pop out and back? Um, and, and, you know, it's, we could have done almost anything throughout the stream. Um, and there are almost no limitations when it comes to sort of what you want your, say, the cannons to do. Um, it's all about which way you decide to approach them, which tools you decide to use, etc. I'm so happy you're, you're sailing around here as I'm doing my little outro spiel. <laughs> <laughs> Just makes it look a lot better. I um, guess we can... We can do this right here. So with that in mind, I want to thank you all for hanging out today. Um, next week, we actually have uh, the team from Terrible Posture on the live stream, and they're going to talk about the production of their interactive sitcom. It's called 3 Out of 10. It is uh, free on the Epic Games Store. They've got two episodes out there. I highly recommend to you go play it. It's Yeah, it is what it is. It's an interactive sitcom. It's basically a, a series where you get to play little mini games sort of as part of the, the show, of the show. It's called 3 out of 10. It's on the Epic Games Store. Go check it out. Uh, and they'll be showing a lot of cool stuff, how they customize Unreal Engine to be able to give them a very quick and iterative pipeline where they can uh, produce these episodes. And so tune in for that next week. It's going to be exciting. Um, if you are interested in any other news related to Unreal Engine, make sure you follow us on our social media handles. You can find us on Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, um, elsewhere as well, make sure if you are new to our community and you're interested in learning more or finding people to talk about, uh, due to the pandemic that's ongoing, uh, no in-person meetups are happening, but another good place where you can go and find some people to talk to is Unreal Slackers. It's a, our unofficial Discord community run by a really, really, really cool, cool bunch of people. Um, so I'll recommend you go check that out. And if you're curious about our future live streams that are coming up, make sure you go ahead and check out the events forum channel. So forums.unrealengine.com and you can go to the events channel. That's where the first news about our upcoming streams are. Oh, and I do believe that Amanda just posted the survey form. Um, you can go ahead and fill that out. Make sure to let us know how, how you thought the stream went and what topics you would like to see in the future. And uh, we will make sure to take a look at that and see what we can do. All right, I think with that said, Andreas, it was a pleasure once again. Um, I am excited to see what, what I might bring you on the stream to do next time. Um, I have a couple of ideas that I'm not willing to share just yet, but uh, not publicly anyway, but I think we're going to talk about it. Um, and I, I think we need to touch a little bit on multiplayer. Uh, I, yeah, I, th I think awesome. it's time. I would send you the project and you make it multiplayer. Okay, well, that that was my plan this weekend anyway. I don't think we're going to stream that. Maybe, maybe. We'll, we'll see. That depends on the schedule. I have some cool stuff coming up. 
Um, but it would be interesting. What I would like to see is sort of us iteratively working on a game over source control, then actually submitting the changes and then playing together. That's something that yeah, I would like that to see. Yeah, that would be awesome. Maybe we, very... should have... we could do that on our channels. Could do that as well, yeah. We'll, we'll, plan some, we'll plan some cool stuff. Anyway, thank you all so much. I hope you're staying safe out there, and we will see you again next week. Take care, everyone. And say bye-bye, Andreas. Bye. Thank you.